watching basketball. His realistic gameplay and constantly adapting the gameplay and play style of all NBA players allow for a simulation experience like none other. In tandem with his game modes like My Team, Play Now, My GM and My League, it's the highest rated basketball simulation game in the world. Although it does have its downs like 2K18, it also has ups such as 2K16. The main drawing point of 2K's game is its My Player. Through My Player, it's been able to expand to systems like The Park. This is the most iconic mode in the game and arguably the most iconic mode in the sports gaming history. Every year since 2009, specifically 2K10, they released a my career. And within the my career, they would employ a story where your creative character would go through a journey to get to the NBA, starting as more time a nobody, working his way up through the league to become a star. These games inspired the youth to go out and play basketball and inspired some to go and be in the league. I was curious if 2K had a realistic aspect within the story modes about how to get to the NBA. Today I decided to rank the NBA 2K story modes in terms of realism on getting to the NBA. As in, would this be a viable option for basketball players? If you don't understand that's a you problem, I can't lie. Today I'm only going to be ranking the last gen consoles, so it'll be from 2K10 to 2K14. Alright, cool. In last place we have 2K11. 2K11 starts off with you creating your character. Yeah. Once you've created your character, you get put into a system similar to the draft combine. Although you don't get to play the drills, you do get to play through the scrimmages. In this story mode, you only get three games and start off as an undrafted prospect. Throughout this process, you also have an NBA insider telling you how you performed in the games, what scouts are thinking of you, and how your draft prospect is rising up. Although the draft prospect aspect, you do get to just see a screen that says, oh, you're a top 10 pick or something now. Basic logic says that your draft stock increases as you play well. How is quite unrealistic as you can go from a uh, undrafted prospect to a top 10 pick in the span of one game. After the draft combine you immediately go into the draft where you get drafted by any team depending on how you played. Once you get drafted by your team you get sent into a 4 game summer league. Once you play in the 4 summer league games it will determine whether you go to the NBA or the D league. If you go down to the D league you can go up to the NBA based on your play style and stats. However if you go straight from the G league to the NBA you're gonna start on the bench no matter what. This is basically the story of Alex Caruso. He went to college for four years, averaged eight points, five assists, and two steals. He's always been a good defender. Went to the draft, went undrafted. He played in summer league, and his play in summer league ended up getting him a D league contract with the 76ers D league team. And through that, he worked his way up to the NBA, eventually being on the Lakers, and now on the Chicago Bulls. NBA 2K11 is last due to the basic concept that. A lot of players going to the draft combine are there to improve their stock. However, however, players with undrafted stock don't tend to take dramatic jumps such as going from the undrafted to the number 10 pick. Boom. Uh, cool, so next is 2K14. 2K14 should undisputably be the greatest 2K storyline of all time, but that's just some video in and of itself. 2K14 starts with you just playing basketball in the random court outside by yourself, when your agent runs up to you and tells you that he got you tickets to a rookie showcase. Now this rookie showcase I haven't been able to find per se, so the closest thing I'm equating it to is like a Team USA scrimmage or maybe or maybe like a draft combine scrimmage. There's nothing specifically called a rookie showcase that predates being in the NBA. You can class, you can classify the All Star Game rookie showcase, but you know, but if you do, you're a dickhead for watching this video and considering. Dick. That your agent gives you tickets to the rookie showcase three weeks before the event. You have to catch a plane to New York and take part in the rookie showcase. In the locker room, your coach warns you about Jackson Ellis. This is your rival throughout the game and the entire storyline. Simply an NPC that plays the same position as you have. However, scouts and TV tend to pit you against each other. I guess. I don't know. I, I see you I out there, chill. Really get into the specifics of why you're beefing, but I guess you're just beefing because you're bored or something. In this game, the scouts want to determine who's better, either you or Jack Snellis. So, depending on how you play, will determine how you look on their draft boards. On your way onto the court, Jack Snellis catches you in the hallway and starts talking trash. Now, obviously, in the game, you can determine how you respond. You can either respond positive in a positive aggressive manner or just an aggressive manner so you either start beef with him and basically tell you're going to beat him up or you basically just say you're going to cook him on the court and then he, put, he calls you a chump and walks away hey, i see you out there chump you then play through the rookie showcase play however you play your game if you play well you move up on drop boards and a lot of scouts have you above jackson ellis however if you don't play well it hurts your stock negatively hurts negatively is a double negative you dumbass do better hey, dick. Hey. After the rookie showcase, you run into Jackson Ellis again, and assuming you played better than him, he tries talking trash. Now, depending on how you respond, you can actually try to fight him. You can also just try to take a peaceful, calm, I bet I'm best than you and you know it type route, you know? Your agent then tells you that you moved past him on most scouts' draft board, meaning that theoretically you should be picked higher than him in the NBA draft. The scene cuts to you in your house and your agent has come to visit you. The agent then comes and tells you that you're basically in the NBA, you just have to fill out a personality test to send back to the NBA. 
NBA, not a specific team, the NBA in general. Once again, I searched it, couldn't find a personality test. All I found was, uh, which NBA players test are you? Yeah, I spit like I've got dyslexia. Yeah, the agent then asked you some questions like which NBA team you actually want to go to, what you consider most important in terms of basketball, and then actually hands you a personality test which asks you a bunch of questions referring to your coachability, confidence, play style, team chemistry, and such. He then shouts, We gotta get you a suit! <laughs> he did not get you a suit. He lied. You then go to the NBA draft, and sometimes you get drafted below Jackson, sometimes you get drafted in front of Jackson. The reaction from the my play differs, however, you still go to the NBA. You then go into a private room where you sign a contract and get introduced to the team that you get drafted to. Now, more time the rookie signing is done in public, however, not every rookie drafted gets a press conference, so it, theoretically it could be done in private. And obviously, fun fact, I haven't been drafted to the NBA, not yet. So I don't know if they actually show you like a highlight reel of your team. However, it, it, theoretically that could happen. It, it makes sense anyway. In the NBA, you go for a bit of rookie hazing. You, you don't play your first two games, yada yada, bada boom, bada bing. And then, boom, your NBA career starts. I'm placing it fourth because A, the rookie showcase doesn't exist. It's already often a bad start. It's, it's better than NBA 2K13 because you actually go against actual players. The NBA personality test doesn't exist, which also loses at points. Now the team interview seems somewhat realistic and seems to affect your draft stock. The combination of all these aspects lead to the best story in NBA 2K, however, leads to the fourth most realistic storyline in terms of last gen. Alright, quick intermission. I'm sitting crisscross applesauce on the floor. My leg is numb. I'm not feeling this bitch. This bottom leg is not there no more. Hiding. MIA. And you ever try to move a you ever try to move a numb leg? The way this thing is tingling. Tingling. I don't even know for it. Alright, boom, third. Third is NBA 2K10. Now this is the original 2K storyline. You, you start off as an undrafted prospect playing in the summer league. You play for any random team you don't get to choose. You play a six game summer league and this adds points as well because the actual summer league is five games minimum and eight games max. You start off as a walk on the roster and depending on how you play, you earn more minutes and you earn your spot on the starting roster. This is, the, this is where you originally get the NBA insider. This Tom Dubois looking ass nigga just tell you how you played through games, whether you did good, whether you did bad, whether you're getting drafted, whether scouts are looking at you, etc, etc. Basically telling you if you're going to the league or not. Assuming you play well enough in all five games, you get to pick which team you go to a training camp for. Obviously you just lose some points because unless you're a top pick, you don't get to pick specifically which team you want to go to. They generally come to you. However, the fact that you don't go straight into the draft and get drafted, it also adds points because... A lot of players that play in summer league did not get drafted. You get put into actual training camp with the full NBA roster. You get sent into the D League affiliate of the team. From there, it's for the standard protocol of if you play well enough in the D League, you get called up to the NBA on as a bench player and work up to becoming an NBA star. This is highly realistic as a lot of players get their start in summer league. It's also quite realistic because a lot of players that do succeed in summer league don't go straight into the NBA. They tend to get signed to the G League affiliate or D League affiliate at the time and then have to work their way into the NBA. It's hard, isn't it? It's a hard story. Number two is NBA 2K12. Because this is being recorded post-edit, I'm going to keep this quick and brief. NBA 2K12 has you playing in the Rookie Showcase. You play through the Rookie Showcase against random NPCs, and after the Rookie Showcase, you get put into pre-draft interview. Obviously, depending on how you played in the Rookie Showcase, your stock will improve. However, there's always a chance you will get drafted. After the interview, depending on how you answer the questions, your draft stock can either improve or decrease. After you get drafted, you can look at your contract, which is a viable option. However, as it's non-negotiable, it's irrelevant. You skip over summer league and jump straight into the NBA. However, you will come off as a bench player. This is highly realistic as a lot of high draft prospects skip summer league in order to go straight into training camp or the league. However, they don't pan out because they don't have any experience and end up on the bench. At the number one spot, I'm putting the NBA 2K13 storyline. Now this storyline follows the basic premise after 2K12 of going to this rookie showcase that doesn't exist and you would think that obviously the rookie showcase doesn't exist and I just said that the previous one was a highly realistic thing so why is it number one? No cap, they're both really good, I just couldn't decide. Oh, get him out of here! It's not even that they're the same, both these stories have really good realistic aspects to them However, this one has slightly more realistic aspects that I believe draft prospects actually go through. So you start from the rookie showcase, and obviously this doesn't exist. However, 
it gets the benefit of the doubt because during this rookie showcase, you actually get to play against actual NBA prospects, the likes of Damian Lillard and Dion Waiters. They're actual NBA players playing against you. You play your game and your draft stock improves. After the game, you get put into team interviews. They'll ask you a bunch of questions to see if, if you're cold enough. They'll ask you a bunch of questions to see if you're fit for the team. Depending on how you answer will determine whether these teams will draft you and whether your stock improves or decreases. After that, the VC you made, you get to take that and buy an actual suit. I'm not sure if this is a stunt I've actually wanted. Do NBA players buy their suits? Because I'm thinking tailors must do it for free. Because ain't no way these broke college students. Because DB, these men are more time coming out of college. They don't make money in college. So how are they paying for these three piece luxury silk suits? Doesn't make sense. Tailored as well. Tailored to the exact fit. No way. Yeah, so you have to pay for a draft suit. And after that, you go into the NBA draft. Before the draft begins, you get to look at a mock draft, which will give you an idea of where you're projected to get drafted. Once you get drafted, you actually get to look at your contract. It will determine how much you get paid and what your role on the team will be. The first contract you get is non-negotiable. This is the standard for rookies coming in. They don't get to decide what their contract is going to be. They get the contract based on where they're drafted, and it's a done deal. The only negative is, and this happens with all 2Ks, no matter where you get drafted, you will start on the bench. So I don't understand why the drafted nigga at number one but then put me on the bench. Like, when I, I'll be coming off the bench, averaging 50. 50, 12, and 17. With three blocks and 17 steals, and these men will put me on the bench. Does that make sense? I'll be doing this off the bench, and they're still not starting me. Come on, man. Come on, Mac D'Antoni. Have some sense. What did I do? Just go to the office! What did I do? I put this over NBA 2K10 because, although Ricky Shokas is just a lie, playing against actual draft prospects does somewhat increase the validity of this fraud. However, it still is a lie. It also gets benefits for adding interviews after the game. The NBA teams need to know who they're drafting. They need to understand what type of player they're drafting in order to manage them in the future. You also get points for the suit because obviously, you need, excluding technically Anthony Edwards, although he didn't go to the draft because he was forced to stay home, every NBA player has worn a suit to the draft, meaning that it's basically a compulsory facet of the draft. You do, the contract also has a nice little touch as you have to look over what you're signing to understand what you're getting. Making it non-negotiable shows that you are a rookie and have no leverage in the league. So that's why I put it number one. This is only part one of ranking the realism of NBA micro. Let me know what you think of the video. Stay tuned for part two. But with that, if you like the video, like the video. If you don't, don't. Subscribe if you want to subscribe. And with that, I'm done. Okay, bye. Fam, this leg is fully numb. I can't feel it. I can't feel it. Hold on. I can't feel this leg, you know. It's actually like, this means nothing to me. It's like a moon boot on my shoe. I want them, what's, what do that niggas, what's that nigga name? That arm nigga, arms called Leon or something, him. It's like wearing him on my leg. I can't feel it.